All right guys, so this video is going to be the unit four study guide. Um, I'm gonna kind of go through this fairly quick because this is a long review and I don't wanna take too long. Um, so feel free to pause it anytime, rewind, um, whatever you need to do. Okay, so let's start. So number one, draw a picture of a wave and label the following parts. Okay, so first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna draw a wave. So we're gonna draw our line here. And this line actually right here is called the origin. Okay, so that middle horizontal line is the actual origin. Okay, so we're gonna take our wave, we're gonna make a wave. Okay, so let's label the parts. So the very top of a wave is called a crest. Okay, so it is called a crest. The very bottom of a wave down here is called a trough. The way I remember that is we feed animals in a trough and it looks like a trough. Okay, so that's one way it could help you remember. Um, let's see, the distance from the top to the origin or the bottom to the origin. Okay, it's basically the height of a wave. This is called amplitude. Okay, and lastly, we have, this is going to be wavelength. So it is important to know that wavelength it has to have one full crest and one full trough. Okay, so it has to start and end at the same spot. So if I start it here at the beginning, it has to end right here. So I have one full crest and I have one full trough. Okay, so you can have multiple variations of a wavelength. So you could start at the top of a crest and then end at the top of a crest. And you can start at the bottom of a crest and end at the bottom, I'm sorry, at bottom of a trough and end at the other trough. Okay, so that is a wavelength. Okay, so let's move on to our next question. Number two, use the diagram below to answer the following questions. In the diagram above, both letters A and B represent the, okay, so the distance from a trough to trough here and on A and B, this is called the wavelength. So we just touched base on that. So the wavelength. Okay, B, compare the letters A and B. Explain how increasing A would affect the energy and frequency of the wave. Okay, so if I increase wavelength, Okay, so remember that upside down Y is called lambda, and that's our symbol for wavelength. If I increase wavelength, my frequency is going to go down. Okay, so frequency is the number of waves in a second. And if I make my waves longer, I can't fit as many waves in one second. So frequency is going to go down. Okay, then we knew that energy is directly tied to frequency. Okay, so if frequency has to go down, energy is going to go down as well. Okay, so you can write that in a sentence if you want. I'm just using this as just an explanation. Um, letter C, compare letters A and B. Explain how decreasing B. Okay, so we're going to make our wavelength smaller. Okay, so our wavelength is going to get be smaller. So therefore, we can fit more waves in one second. So that's going to increase my frequency. Okay, and if I increase frequency, my energy is going to increase as well. Okay, so those are directly related. Okay, so number three, what happens to the wavelength of an EMR wave if you double the frequency? Okay, so remember our equation is C equals frequency times wavelength. And C never changes, that's the speed of light. Okay, so if one goes up, the other one has to go down. So if my frequency goes up by two, okay, my wavelength is gonna to have to go down by two. So we're gonna divide it by two. Okay, um, see letter B, I want to triple the frequency of a radio wave. What specifically should I do to the wavelength of this wave? Okay, so again, we talked about wavelength and frequency are opposite. So if my frequency goes up by three, my wavelength has to go down. So we would divide by three. Okay, so it would be a third of what it originally was. Letter C, which EMR waves have the shortest wavelength? So shortest wavelength means high frequency, high energy. So that one would be gamma. Which EMR waves have the highest frequency? Okay, so the number of waves in a second. So that was gamma as well. Letter E, which of the two types of EMR waves are on either side of visible light in the spectrum? which has longer wavelength of light and shorter wavelength of light. OK, 
Okay, so real quick, I'm gonna show our spectrum. I'm gonna write my spectrum right here. So we start off with radio. Okay, then we're gonna go to micro. Then we have IR or infrared. Then we have our visible light. Then UV. And then we have X-ray. And lastly, gamma. Okay, so for this particular question, it asks for what are the two types of waves on either side of visible light. So that would be IR and UV. Okay, so let's label our actual spectrum here. So gamma, oh, let me fix that. So gamma with an A. Okay, gamma is going to have the shortest wavelength, highest frequency, and highest energy. Radio over here is going to have a higher wavelength, lower frequency, and lower energy. Okay, so you gotta remember radio waves, microwaves are all around us. Okay, so if they had high energy, that would not bode well for us. Okay, so that was our actual spectrum. And then we can also do our colors under visible light. So our colors, remember it sounds like a cowboy. That is gonna be Roy G Biv. Okay, so red, orange, yellow, green, blue, indigo, violet. So it's gonna follow from left to right or right to left exactly the way. Um, if we were ranking, it depends on how you're ranking it, but it's gonna follow the same pattern. Okay, so let's move on to our next question. Which color of visible light has the least energy and longest wavelength? So remember, longest wavelength, low energy is towards the left. So that means my red color has the least energy and longest wavelength. G, which color of visible light has the most energy and shortest wavelength? So that is going to be my violet because that is on the right side of my color spectrum. H, rank gamma rays, radio waves, ultraviolet, and visible in order of increasing wavelength. So increasing wavelength is going from left to right. So we're going towards radio. So we're gonna start with the one furthest to the right. So gamma is gonna have our shortest. Then we're gonna move on to our ultraviolet, so that's UV, then visible, and then lastly is radio. Okay, letter I, rank yellow light, X-rays, microwaves, and infrared in order of decreasing frequency. Okay, so frequency is getting smaller. Okay, so remember, smaller frequencies are going to the left. Okay, so we're gonna rank this one again from right to left. Okay, so the one furthest on the right is going to be x-rays. So that's our first one. Okay, then we're gonna have yellow light because that is under our visible, visible spectrum. Okay, followed by IR. And then lastly is micro. Okay, letter J, rank red light, violet light, orange light, and green light in order of increasing frequency. So increasing frequency goes from left to right. Okay, so we're gonna start off with the one furthest to the left and move to the right. So the furthest to the left would be red. Okay, followed by orange. Okay, so Roy G. Biv, so remember that. So our, our next one's gonna be green. And then lastly, it's gonna be violet. Okay, letter K, which EMR waves have the highest velocity? So this is kind of a trick question. They all have the same velocity. So they have the same velocity. Okay, and it is the speed of light. So C equals 3.00 times 10 to the eighth meters per second. Okay, so they all have the same speed. The only thing that varies is frequency and wavelength. Okay, so if one goes up, the other one goes down. So if one goes up, the other one goes down, and vice versa. Letter L, which EMR waves have the highest energy? So that is going to be gamma. Okay, so as cool as it would be, if I could turn into the Hulk, okay, being hit with gamma waves, that would be cool, but it has very high energy and that would not be very good for me. Okay, B, I'm sorry, letter M, describe and draw an example of the relationship between frequency of an EMR wave and its A energy, okay? So when we think of energy and frequency, we have the equation E 
equals h times f. Okay, h is a constant. Okay, so h doesn't change. So if just for the sake of this argument, I'm just gonna leave that, I'm gonna X that out because it doesn't change. So if energy goes up, frequency goes up. Okay, so this is called a direct relationship. So if one goes up, the other one goes up. If one goes down, the other one goes down. Okay, now when we look at frequency and wavelength, okay, so describe and draw an example of the relationship between frequency of an EMR and its wavelength. Okay, so remember we have the equation C equals frequency times wavelength. So if, if C never changes, okay, so that has to be the same number. Okay, so if wavelength goes up, frequency has to go down and vice versa. Okay, this is called an indirect relationship. Okay, so letter N, if the frequency of an EMR waves were halved, how would we, how would the energy value change? So remember we had the equation E equals H times F. And since H honestly didn't matter, since it's constant, okay, so if my frequency goes down, so divide by two, okay, my energy is gonna go down by two. So it'd be halved as well. Okay, so that's that direct relationship. Okay, so number four, moving on. So these are the equations. So this is where you've got to know these equations. We will give you the constants, but you need to know the equations. So first equation is simply the speed of light, C equals frequency times wavelength. Okay, followed by E, energy equals H times F. And lastly, E equals H times C over wavelength. Okay, so I, the way that I remember this is C, spelling C with a C. Okay, I'll go ahead and tell you, if you know the four, if you just have the fourth equation, um, you can, all you have to do is flip-flop these two. Those are interchangeable. Okay, so if you want to write it out as the fourth equation, you can. You can say wavelength equals HC over E. Okay, so that's kind of up to you on how you want to memorize that. Okay, but just know that E and wavelength are interchangeable. Okay, so A, find the frequency of an EMR photon that has an energy value of 4.19 times 10 to the 18th joules. Okay, so this is the way I do it is I label what I'm looking for and I label what they gave me. So I want to know frequency, so frequency is my question mark. Okay, and they gave me E, energy. That's my check mark. So I would say which equation has E and F? So you would put E equals h times f. Okay, so I'm gonna fill in what I know, so I know e, so we're gonna do 4.19 times 10 to the 18th equals h, which is 6.626 times 10 to the negative 34 times f. Okay, so now I've gotta get f by itself, so in order to do this, you have to divide both sides by 6.626 Okay, to get rid of it over here on the right side. So I'm gonna divide both sides by 6.6, sorry, 6.6, .6. let me clear that up, mess that up. So we're gonna divide both sides by 6.626 times 10 to the negative 34. I'm gonna do the same thing over here. Okay, the right side is gonna cancel out Okay, leaving me with 4.19 times 10 to the 18th divided by 6.626 times 10 to the negative 34. This is where you have to be careful. Okay, if you're going to type in the calculator, I always use parentheses. Okay, I would put four point, I would put this top number in parentheses and I would put this in parentheses. Okay, because sometimes you can simply get an error just from the calculator itself. Okay, so if I do my math right, my frequency would be 6.32 times 10 to the 51 hertz. So the units for frequency would be hertz. So that would be my answer. Okay, so real quick, our answer, we need to check our significant figures. If I have three in 4.19 and I have four in 6.626, you're only as good as your weakest link, so my answer can only have three. So you kinda gotta get in that habit. 
So letter B, calculate the frequency of a wave which has the wavelength of 4.15 meters. So frequency is my question mark. Wavelength, they gave that to me. So that is my check mark. So my equation that uses both of those is C equals frequency times wavelength. So let's plug in what we know. So C is 3.00 times 10 to the eighth equals frequency, I don't know. And my wavelength is 4.15. Okay, so same thing here. We got to divide both sides by 4.15 to get rid of it on the right side. Okay, the reason we are dividing is you have to do the opposite. Okay, if F is multiplying by 4.15, we have to divide to get rid of it. Okay, so if I do my math right on my calculator, let me find my actual answer sheet that I've already done. Okay, my frequency would be 7.23 times 10 to the 7 hertz. Okay, so letter C, what is the wavelength of a wave? So we're looking for wavelength. That's my question mark. And I have a frequency of 5.77 times 10 to the 14. Okay, so same equation. C equals frequency times wavelength. So 3.00 times 10 to the 8th equals frequency, which is 5.77 times 10 to the 14th times wavelength. Okay, so I've got to get rid of frequency on the right side, so I'm gonna divide both sides by 5.77 times 10 to the 14th. And I should get my wavelength would be 5.20 times 10 to the negative seven meters. So the units for wavelength is meters. Okay, so real quick, even though I didn't cover it in part B, I have three sig figs here on 3.00, and I have three on 5.77, so my answer has to have three. Letter D, what is the energy? So we're automatically we're looking for E. Okay, and I have a frequency of 4.00 times 10 to the fourth. So my equation that uses both of those is E equals H times F. Okay, so E I don't know. Okay, so I'm leaving it as E. H is 6.626 times 10 to the negative 34 times my frequency, which is 4.00 times 10 to the fourth. Okay, so all I gotta do is multiply those two, put them in the calculator, and my answer would be 2.65 times 10 to the negative 29 joules. So the unit for energy is joules. Letter E, what is the energy? So we're looking for E. Okay, and I have a wavelength of 7.67 times 10 to the negative seven. Okay, so that is my wavelength. So E is my question mark. Wavelength is they gave it to me. So my equation that uses both of those is E equals H times C over wavelength. Okay, so I don't know E, so I'm gonna leave it as E. H is 6.626 times 10 to the negative 34 times my C, which is 3.00 times 10 to the eighth, all over my wavelength, which is 7.67 times 10 to the negative seven. Okay, so this is where you gotta really be careful and use your parentheses in the calculator. Okay, so my energy ends up being 2.59 times 10 to the negative 19 joules. F, calculate the energy, so we know energy. I mean, sorry, we're looking for energy. Of a photon from a violet that given off the frequency of 7.1 times 10 to the 14th inverse seconds. So this is the same thing as saying hertz right here, so don't get tripped up on that. We told you it was frequency, so you should know that this is F that we are looking for, or that they gave us, sorry. So my equation that uses E and F would be E equals H times F. Okay, so E I don't know, so I'm gonna leave it as E. H is 6.626 times 10 to the negative 34 times F, which is 7.1 times 10 to the 14th. Okay, so just multiply those two, and your answer would be 4.7 times 10 to the negative 19 joules. Okay, letter G. An X-ray photon has an energy of 2.99 times 10 to the negative 18 joules, so we know E, and we wanna know what is the frequency, so that's our question mark. 
And what is the wavelength? So we're gonna have a two-parter, okay? So let's start off with E and F. So we're gonna do E equals H times F. I know E, 2.99 times 10 to the negative 18 equals H, so 6.626 times 10 to the negative 34 times F. Okay, so I'm gonna divide both sides by H to get rid of it on the right side. So your correct answer would be for frequency would be 4.51 times 10 to the 15th hertz. So that's the answer to one part. Now I wanna know wavelength, so my equation that uses E and wavelength is going to be that E equals H times C over wavelength. Okay, I know E, so 2.99 times 10 to the negative 18 equals h 6.626 times 10 to the negative 34 times c which is 3.00 times 10 to the 8 all over wavelength okay so this is where you have to be careful with your algebra if there's a variable on bottom that you wish to know all you have to do is switch these two okay so you can take h and c get your answer multiply h and c and then just simply divide that by 2.99 times 10 to the negative 18. So those are interchangeable. So that's a little shortcut for you. So wavelength, if you typed in the calculator right, would be 6.65 times 10 to the negative 8 meters. Okay, so that was a little shortcut for you, so hopefully that kind of helps. H, what is the wavelength of a wave that gives off 5.6 times 10 to the 23rd joules of energy? So E, we know, and we are looking for wavelength. So again, we're going to use the E equals H times C over wavelength. Okay, so E is 5.6 times 10 to the 23rd. Oop, let me clear that up a little bit. So 10 to the 23rd equals H. So 6.626 times 10 to the negative 34th over 3, I'm not, multiplying by 3.00 times 10 to the 8th all over wavelength. So again, these are interchangeable. Okay, so you're going to take H times C, get an answer, and then divide it by 5.6 times 10 to the 23rd. So my wavelength should be 3.5 times 10 to the negative 49 meters. Okay, so if you need to rewind those at all, um, you can do that. So hopefully that kind of helped you out. Conversions, so we're gonna use our conversions. So you'll get a metric scale. So we're gonna do these. These are just one step problems. So don't worry about this too much. I'm gonna show you my way. If you count decimals, and if you go over by decimals, that's fine too. Um, but I use dimensional analysis since we will use that later in the year. So I kind of like to keep it fresh. Okay, so the way I do this is one, you always start off with what you're given. So 465 nanometers. Okay, before I even worry about numbers, if nanometers is on top, nanometers has to be on bottom next. Then we will go to meters. So this is the way I do it. I see which one's bigger, a meter or a nanometer. Okay, so meter is bigger. That is a base, which is 10 to the zero. Okay, nano is 10 to the negative nine, so very small. Okay, so I'm gonna set my biggest one as one. So meter is one meter. Now I simply count how many times it takes me to get from 10 to the zero to 10 to the negative nine, which would just be one times 10 to the ninth. Okay, so however many times it takes you to get there, that's your exponent. So if you do it this way, your exponent will always be positive. And that's it. So that is, this is a one-step problem. So you would multiply whatever's on top. So 465 times 1 is 465. And then you would divide by whatever's on bottom. So 465 divided by 1 times 10 to the ninth would give me 4.65 times 10 to the negative 7 meters. 2. 3.5 times 10 to the 2 micrometers, so we're going to start off what we're given, so 3.5 times 10 to the 2 micrometers, so micro is that little weird U, okay, so we're going to start off what we're given, so micrometers has to be on bottom, and we're going to go to nanometers, so we got to see, 
which one is bigger? Okay, so micro is going to be 10 to the negative 6, and nano is 10 to the negative 9. Okay, so micro is actually going to be bigger, so I'm going to set micro as 1, and I'm going to count how many take, times it takes me to get from negative 6 to negative 9, and that would be 3, so it would be 1 times 10 to the 3. So all we're going to do is multiply the top, and our answer is going to be 3.5 times 10 to the 5th nanometers. Okay, number three. So we're going to start off what we're given. So 780 megahertz. Okay, so I'm going to put megahertz on bottom, and then I'm going to put hertz on top. Okay, so megahertz is bigger, so that's megahertz is going to be 10 to the 6th hertz. Since I, there's no prefix there at all, it's just hertz by itself, this is a base. So that's going to be 10 to the 0. Okay, that almost looks like another 6, so let me clean that up a little bit. Okay, so that's 10 to the 0. Okay, so mega is going to be bigger. So I'm going to set mega as 1, and then the number it takes me to get from 6 to 0 is 6. So 1 times 10 to the 6th. So just multiply the top two numbers, okay, and you get 7.8 times 10 to the 8th hertz. Okay, so a couple left. So 5.6, so we're going to start off what we're given. 5.6 times 10 to the 6th terahertz. Okay, so I'm going to bring terahertz on bottom and megahertz on top. Okay, so if I look at my scale, terahertz is actually going to be bigger. So that's my biggest one, so I'm going to set that as 1. And then, so terahertz is 10 to the 12th. Okay, megahertz is 10 to the 6th. Okay, so it's going to take me 6 spots to get to 6. So we're going to do 1 times 10 to the 6th. Okay, so multiply the top two numbers, and you get 5.6 times 10 to the 12th megahertz. Okay, so last one, 3.70 times 10 to the negative 6 meters, so 3.70 times 10 to the negative 6 meters. Okay, so I'm going to put meters on bottom next, and I'm putting put nanometers on top. Okay, so meters is definitely bigger than nanometers, so that is a base, so that's 10 to the 0. Nano is going to be smaller, that's 10 to the negative 9. Okay, so I'm going to set meter as 1. Nano, it's going to take me 9 to get there, so 1 times 10 to the 9th. Okay, so multiply both numbers on top, and I get 3.70 times 10 to the 3rd nanometers. Okay, so if you do it another way, that's totally fine, but your, man, your answers should match up to mine. Okay, so just something you could check yourself for. Okay, number 5, so we're moving through this. So we're going to talk about electron transitions. Okay, so when we have an electron that jumps to an outer energy level, so remember the further you go out, the higher the energy. Okay, so this is what's happening here is an electron in level two is absorbing energy. So it absorbs energy gets excited and then jumps and jumps from ground state. So ground state is where they would normally be. Jumps from ground state to level five. Okay, so the way I try to think of this is when you give kids candy and they get energy, the last thing you want them last place you want them to be is at home. Okay, so you want to make them go out and play. Okay, so whenever they come back, okay, if they fall back, oops, a little typo there, electrons release energy. So it releases energy and 
returns to ground state. Okay, so once you're, once the kids have burned the energy from the candy, they can come back home to ground state. Okay, number six, describe and explain the quantum mechanic model. Okay, so the big thing here is, one, it is impossible to know the exact position, okay, my pen's messing up, and momentum okay, of an electron. Okay, so you can abbreviate electron with E the minus sign. Okay, so it's impossible to know exactly where they are in the momentum at the same time. Okay, so this is called the uncertainty principle. Okay, so you can kind of go back that and listen listen to me and stuff. I know my handwriting is not the best on this iPad. Okay, and I'm trying to move quick. Okay, so the quantum mechanical model is it uses shapes of orbitals to determine where electrons are likely located. Okay, so this is based on probability. So based on probability. Okay, so we'll we'll go more into electron shapes and um, and orbital shapes in in the next units to come. So don't worry too much about that. Okay, so off bound principle. Okay, so we're gonna move on to the next section. So off bound principle states that orbitals. Oops, let me clean that up real quick. So orbitals are filled in order of increasing energy. Okay, so this is where it goes from lowest, so lowest energy, oh, I'm starting to lose my ability to write, lowest to highest. Okay, so this is where we have where we drew it in our notes, we have the 1s, then we go to 2s, 2p, 3s, 3p, 3d, okay, 4s, 4p, 4d, okay, 4f, and I'm going to erase some of this because I'm going to start going into that, but this is just for the sake of this. You have Then you have 5s, 5p, 5d, and 5f. Then we have 6s, 6p, 6d. Whoa. So as I'm writing more and more, I'm losing my ability to write. So 6d. Then I have 7s and then 7p. Okay. So the way this is the direct order that has to go in. So the first thing would just be going right through 1s. Then we would go through 2s. Then 2p, 3s. Okay, 3p, 4s, 3d, 4p, 5s, 4d, 5p, 6s, 4f, 5d, 6p, 7s, and lastly, 5f, 6d, 7p. Okay, so all this is doing, and especially from the practice that we've been doing, okay, so you should kind of know how these levels go in order anyway, but what it's stating is that it has to fill up the level before it moves on to the next. Okay, so if I had, here's an example. If I had 3s and I had one arrow in it, and then I had 3p and I had two arrows in it, okay, this would be a violation of off-bow principles because 
3S has to fill up first before you can move on to P. Okay, so that would be off browse principle is you have to fill up the energy level first and then it would move on to the next highest energy level. Okay, so if you do need to rewind it all, um, you can fill this in. I've got to make a little bit of room, so I'm going to clear off some of this. Okay, but please rewind if you need that. Okay, so let's move on to the next. Hun's rule. Okay, so electrons will spread out into each orbital before oh, a pin before being paired up okay so in a correct example of this would be 2p so remember it can hold six electrons so one two three three lines so if they say this is 2p3 okay so it would look like this this is a correct version now if I did 2p, 1, 2, 3, and I did this, 1 up, 1 down, 1 up, okay, this would be wrong, okay? So electrons do not want to be near each other unless they have to be, okay? So that is Hund's rule, okay? And lastly, we have Pauli's exclusion principle. So electrons in an orbital must have an opposite spin. Okay, so what we mean by this, so say I have my level 2s. I'm gonna have one up, down, one arrow, one up arrow, and one down arrow. This would be correct. If I had my level 2s and I had two up arrows, okay, both going in the same direction, this would be wrong. That would be violating Pauli's exclusion principle. Okay. Moving on to number eight. Okay, so we're gonna talk about our actual energy levels. So we're gonna start off with S. S holds two electrons. Okay, it's the first two columns in your periodic table. Okay, and S starts at the energy level one and is in every energy level after that. So it is in all energy levels. And what I mean by energy levels is the numbers on the left side of the periodic table. Okay, so that one, two, three, four, those are energy levels. So P can hold six, because it has six columns, and we'll see more of that here in a second. Okay, P starts on two, so all it's on all levels, starting on two. Okay, so two and on. D, okay, so D holds 10. So it is on all starting at three. F lastly can hold 14 and it is all starting at level four. Okay, so the big thing there is just knowing how many electrons are in each, but you've been doing a lot of practice, so this is just kind of a refresher. So number nine, number nine described and give the example of valence and core electrons. So valence, okay, so valence electrons, that, those are your outer electrons, so outer. Okay, so outermost electrons, and this is made up of the highest S and P level. Okay, so you would just add up the total amount of the highest S and P level. Okay, so valence electrons, it can have a max of eight. Okay, so only since S can hold two, P can hold six. Okay, so you would add up the highest S and P to get your number of valence electrons. If you start going into the D level, you will quickly get past eight. Okay, so you gotta watch out for that. So core electrons, okay, those are going to be your inner electrons. Okay, so they are before 
valence. Okay, so valences are used for bonding um, or they can be taken. Okay, so core electrons are held in more tight, so they're on the inner energy levels. So those are a lot more bonded to the atom itself. Okay, so let's move on to the next. Okay, draw extended orbital notation for aluminum. Okay, so this is what we mean. So by extended orbital notation, so extended means you got to start back at one. Orbital notation, that is going to be arrows. Okay, so we're going to look at aluminum. So we'll do a real quick refresher. I have my periodic table down here at the bottom. Okay, so aluminum is right here. Okay, so let's do a real quick refresher. So my left two columns are going to be our S. So S, and it can hold two electrons. Then our next energy level is going to be P. So these right six columns, so this can hold six electrons. Then our middle section is going to be D, and that holds 10 electrons. Okay, and lastly, we have F, and this holds 14 electrons. Okay, so remember our energy levels are over here. So one, two, and S and P, follow them directly. Okay, D is always gonna be one behind. So if we were on energy level four, so if we we're on energy level four right here, this would be 4S, and then starting at 21, that would be 3D. Then once we got back to gallium over here, this is now back to 4P. Okay, so D is always one behind. F is gonna be two behind. So if I'm on level 6S, and I need to keep going, it's gonna drop me down here, and this would be 4F. Okay, so this would be 4F down here, so it's two behind. Then if I had to go all the way through that and I came back up to number 71 up here, I'm back on 5D. Okay, so this was just kind of a little bit of a refresher. Okay, so we need to get to aluminum, so our problem is aluminum. Okay, so, we're gonna go through 1S, so just for the sake of this, helium can be brought over here because it's technically in the S group even though it's over on the right because it's noble gas, okay? Oh yeah, forgot. This whole right group over here, our last column is our noble gases. So all of these are our noble gases. So we need to get to aluminum, so we're gonna start at hydrogen. Okay, so we're gonna go all the way through hydrogen. Okay, so that would be, I'm gonna write the answer up here real quick. That would be 1s2. Okay, gotta move on to my next level, so this would be, I gotta go all the way through, so that would be 2s2. Okay, even though I know we're doing orbital notation, okay, I'm just writing out our electron configuration because I'm not gonna take up all the room for arrows on this one. We'll put it in the answer though. Okay, so I gotta go all the way through 2p. So 2P6, I gotta go all the way through 3S, so that'd be 3S2. And I'm gonna land here on 3P, and aluminum is one end, so this would be 3P1. Okay, so we're gonna take that back up to our answer. Okay, draw the external rotation. So it was, we went through 1S, so we're gonna go up arrow, down arrow, because it was full, 1s2. Then you have 2s, up arrow, down arrow, because that was full. Then we move on to 2p, so 2p. So remember, 2p can hold six electrons, so we're gonna have three lines, one, two, three. It's gonna be full, so one, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, so I like to do ups first and then down because it helps me maintain Hun's rule. Okay, so they have to spread out before they stack. Then you have 3s. We're gonna have one up arrow, one down arrow. Okay, and then last we're gonna land on 3p. So remember, p can hold six, so I'm gonna go ahead and draw my three lines. You don't have to fill them up though. Okay, 3p1, so it's just gonna be one arrow, that's it. So that would be our correct answer. Okay, so ex next one, draw extended electron configuration. So remember, electron configuration is just simply the 1s2, 2s2, that's where we use the exponent, the exponents. Okay, so we're looking for zinc. So let's go down here to zinc. Okay, let me clear some of this up. Get my eraser a little bit bigger. 
Okay, so we're looking for zinc. So zinc is right here. Okay, and let's clear this up. So I gotta go through 1S. Okay, so this is gonna be 1S2. I gotta go through 2S. So 2S2. Gotta go through 2P. So 2P6. I'm gonna go through 3S. So 3S2. I'm gonna go through 3P. So 3P6. Now I'm on level four. So this is going to be 4S2. Okay, now you have to be careful. Now we are in 3D because D is always one behind. Okay, so I'm gonna go all the way through to the end. So on the 10th one in D. So this would be, it would end on 3D10. Okay, so I'm gonna take this back up to our answers up here. Okay, electron configuration for zinc. So that's gonna be 1S2, 2S2, 2P6, 3s2, 3p6, 4s2, and lastly 3d10. Okay, number three, draw the noble gas orbital notation for iodine. So noble gas, this is our shortcut, and we're going for iodine. So we're going to go back down. Okay, let me clear this up. Okay, Oop, let me cut the top. Okay, so we are looking for iodine, which is right here. Okay, so remember our noble gases are on the right, the far right column. So you were looking for the last noble gas before iodine. The last noble gas before iodine was krypton. Okay, so that's where we're gonna start. Okay, so we're going to write krypton in brackets. Okay, so that is our starting point. So we don't have to do the 1S, 2S. Okay, so this basically is like a jump start or a jump ahead. Okay, now we do have to go back down to the left on the next level though. Okay, so we're gonna start here at 5S and we're gonna go all the way through it. So this is gonna be 5S, 2. We're gonna go through, this is 4D. So we're gonna go through it, so 4D, 10, okay. Now we're back on 5P, so we're gonna go over one, two, three, four, five. So we're gonna end on 5P5. Okay, so we're gonna take our answer back up to the top. Whoop, went too far. Okay, so my answer would be KR. Okay, we're gonna do 5S, so this is orbital notation. Oops, don't know what will happen there. Orbital notation is where we use the arrows, so you're going to do 5s, okay, and you're going to do an up arrow, down arrow, since it's full, so 5s2, it was full, 4d, so remember d holds 10, so we're going to write 4d, and then you're going to have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 lines, so if it can hold 10 electrons, that's 5 pairs, and it is going to be full, so 1, 2, 3, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So that is full. And then you have 5P because we ended on 5P5. So we're going to draw one, two, three lines. We're going to fill up with five. So one, two, three, four, and five. Okay, so that last one is not going to fill up. So that would be our correct answer. So we're gonna do next one, noble gas electron configuration. So electron configuration is when we use the exponents. Our noble gas shortcut for oxygen. So this is not gonna be much of a shortcut, okay, because oxygen is not very far. Okay, so let's clear this up. Oxygen is going to be right here. So our last noble gas before oxygen was helium. Okay, so not much of a shortcut. Regardless, we're going to still write heliums in, helium in brackets, okay? Then we're going to start back down on the next level, so we're going to start on 2S. Okay, we're going to go all the way through it, so you're going to put 2S2. Now we're on 2P, and we're going to go 1, 2, 3, 4 in, okay? And you're going to end on 2P4.
Okay, so that would be our answer right there. That's it. Okay, so we're gonna write helium 2s2 and then 2p4. Ooh, that was a horrible four. Okay, number five. Draw the noble gas orbital notation. So orbital notation is the arrows, and noble gas is our shortcut for platinum. Okay, so we're gonna go down here. Okay, so platinum, we're gonna clear up this a little bit. Okay, so let's find platinum. So platinum is going to be right here, number 78. Okay, so we're gonna look for our last noble gas before platinum. Okay, the last noble gas before platinum was xenon, so that is right here, number 54. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna write xenon in brackets. So xenon, okay. Then we're gonna start back down here in the next level, so we gotta go move down to 6s. We're gonna go all the way through it. Okay, so 6s, 2. So I know this is orbital, so but I don't wanna write the arrows because we'll run out of room. We'll write the arrows in our answer at the top. Okay, so after we get through 6s, it takes us down here to 4f. Okay, so I'm gonna have to go all the way through this. Okay, so 4f, so remember f is always two behind. So we just got, we were on 6s, now we're on 4f. And f holds 14, so you're gonna write 4f, 14. Now we're gonna go back up here and we're gonna start back at 71. We are now on 5d. Okay, and we're gonna go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay, so this would be 5d8. Okay, so that would be, if we asked for electron configuration, that would be your answer right there. But we asked for orbital. So again, if you need to rewind this, you can do that, okay, to see what I was writing there. So our correct answer, so we, xenon was our last one. So we're gonna write xenon in brackets. Then we were on 6s. So S can only hold two, so I'm gonna draw one line with two arrows in it. Okay, then we went all the way through 4F, so 4F can hold 14. Okay, so that's gonna be seven lines. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay, so we're gonna fill it up with 14 arrows since we had to go all the way through it. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 11, 12, 13, 14. Okay, so we filled up there. And then we were back on 5D. So you're gonna write 5D and you're gonna have five lines because D can hold 10. So one, two, three, four, five. Okay, and we landed on 5D8. So it's gonna be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. Okay, so that would be our answer right there. Okay, so last one on this one, draw the noble gas electron configuration for 10. Okay, so 10, we're gonna find this word noble gas, we're gonna do our shortcut. Electron configuration is gonna do our exponent, so we're gonna look for 10. Okay. Let's clear this up a little bit. Okay, now why erase noble gases, those are the ones on the right. So 10 is going to be Sn. Okay, so our last noble gas before 10 was Krypton. Okay, and let's make some room up here. Okay, so I'm gonna put Krypton in brackets. Then I'm gonna start back down here at 5s. Okay, so I'm gonna go all the way through 5s, so this is 5s2. Okay, I'm gonna go all the way through 4d. Okay, so that's 4D10. And then I'm gonna start one, two, I'm gonna go in two in to 5P. So 5P2. Okay, so let's take our answer back up to the top. Okay, and I don't know why there's a weird coloring on my paper. Okay, so our answer was Krypton in brackets, followed by 5S2, then we were in 4D10, and 5p2. Okay, so that was our answer right there. Okay, so hopefully that kind of helped you out on that.
Okay, so I'm not gonna do that for every one of these because it, A, it would just take forever for me scrolling back and forth. So, so hopefully this was enough examples on here to kind of help you out on how to do extended, okay? Orbital notation, which we use arrows versus electron configuration when we use our exponents, okay? So the important thing is you have to know those energy levels, okay? So starting at 1s, okay, how you work your way down, okay? Then we went over the noble gas shortcut, so that makes things a lot quicker and a lot easier, Okay, so we went over some examples. So again, please rewind it if you need help, um, if you need to watch that again, okay, to kind of see how we did it. Okay, so this page right here, you can refer to um, the key on that one. Okay, so we'll post the key on Classroom. So these are all pretty short, so hopefully that'll um, be pretty easy for you. Okay, next page was doing simply the noble gas shortcut. So this one should not be too difficult. Okay, so just know that when we look for number of electrons, okay, that is going to equal the atomic number. So if you ever want to know how many electrons there are, okay, just look at the atomic number. Okay, real quick, also another thing to help check yourself is your numbers on your top, your exponents. Okay, so magnesium has 12 electrons. So this is a way to check yourself to make sure you did everything right. Okay, so my numbers, my exponents or arrows should add up to 12. So two plus two is four, plus six is 10, plus two is 12. Okay, so that is a way to check yourself. So if you need help with that, um, or you're just seeing if you got it right, make sure those numbers add up and match. Okay, so next page was doing noble gas shortcut. Okay, so here I'll actually do some of these because this is um, electron configuration and Lewis dot. Okay, so chlorine, so we're gonna look at chlorine. Okay, let me clear this up. Okay, so chlorine's right here, and we were wanting electron configuration for chlorine. Okay, so we're gonna write it on top. So we gotta go through 1s, so this would be 1s2. Then we're gonna go through 2s, so 2s2. Then we're gonna go through 2p, so 2p6. We're going to go through 3s, so 3s2. And lastly, we're going to end on, so 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. This would be 3p5. Okay, so we're going to take that answer back up here. Okay, so chlorine. Okay, so chlorine had the atomic number of 17. So we're going to be 17 electrons. Okay, and we went through, so it was 1s2. Okay, then we went through 2s2. Let me grab my sheet because I have everything written down on my paper. Then I went through 2p6. Then I went through 3s2. And then I went through 3p5. Okay, so when we want to know the number of valence electrons, so electron dot, okay, cares about valence electrons okay so remember that was the highest so highest s and p levels combined okay so we're going to count how many there are in the highest s and p so the highest s and p i have on chlorine is 3s and 3p so if there was no p that's fine okay so just just the highest s and p okay if there is a p just add that one up okay so s had two 3p had 5, so 5 plus 2 gives me 7 valence electrons. Okay, so you're just going to you're going to write out chlorine, the abbreviation for chlorine. Okay, you're going to start at the top. So we have 7 valence electrons to go through, so you're going to go 1, always start at the top, and then we're going to go clock, clockwise. 2, 3, 4. Now we're going to double up. 5, 6, and lastly, 7. So that is what it would look like there. Okay, so remember, count the highest S and P and add them. Okay, only S and P. So real quick, I'm going to write this in red because people tend to do this. No D or F. Okay, so we, are, we do not care about what's in D and F. Okay, only the highest S and P. Okay, so...
we're going through our periodic table. Okay, so let me clear this out real quick. Give me one second. Okay, so we're gonna do nitrogen. So nitrogen is right here. I apologize, that was my mother-in-law coming in the room. One day you'll be married and you'll know about that too. Okay, so nitrogen right here. Okay, so I'm gonna show you a real quick trick if you don't already know this. Okay, my numbers on the top of the columns will tell me my number of valence electrons. So 8a, 7a, 6a, 5a, 4a, 3a. Okay, then we go over here to 2a and 1a. Okay, so if I want to know how many valence electrons nitrogen has, okay, so I'm going to put nitrogen. I'm going to look up there and it has 5A right above it, so it's going to have 5. So this would be 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. Okay, now some people ask about what about D? Like, so what if you land somewhere here in D? Okay, so the last group number before D was 2A, so all of D has two valence electrons. So that is a shortcut there if you want to use that. Okay, so let's go up to the top and fill that in. So let's go ahead and just do the electron configuration just for the sake of it. So nitrogen had seven. So that would have been 1s2, 2s2, and then 2p3. Okay, so if you want to do the S and P trick, okay, you would count two plus three since two and so my highest level is two. <coughs> so my highest S and P is two S2, two P3. So two plus three gives me five. So you would put nitrogen and then you would start at the top. One, two, three, four, and five. That's the S and P trick. So if we just give you um, the electron configuration, okay, that would be good to know because if you're not sure about what the element is or where it is on the periodic table, all you have to do is count the highest S and P. Or you can do the 1A, 2A, 3A trick that I just showed you. Okay, so let's do one more of these. So we're going to do Krypton. So let's go find Krypton. Let me clear some of this up so we don't care about nitrogen anymore. Okay, so Krypton is right here. Okay, if I look all the way up, okay, it has a group number 8A. Okay, so this only works for the A's. Okay, so let me make some room up here. So we would write Krypton. So Kr. And it has eight valence electrons. So you're going to start at the top. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. Okay. So remember, eight is the maximum number you can have. So that is the most dots you can have right there. Okay, so we're just going to take our answer back up to the top. Okay, it was Krypton, and it had one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. Okay, so eight is the maximum number you can have. So do not count D or F, otherwise you will quickly get past eight. Okay, so... Hopefully that kind of helped you out there, so you can rewind that if you need to. Okay, labeling them or identifying just by us giving the um, energy levels, okay, should be fairly easy. So again, you just got to look through your periodic table, so let's do a couple examples. Okay, so we have 1s2, 2s2, 2p5. Okay, so let me clear this up. Okay. So we had 1s2, so that means we went through 1s. Then we had 2s2. We went through 2s, and it was 2p5. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So my answer would be fluorine. Okay, and that is abbreviated F. Okay, let's pick a little more difficult one. Okay, so let's pick this one. So 1s2, 2s2. So all the way through, and we're going to go all the way to 3d10. Okay, so let's do it. Okay, let me erase that. Okay, so we're trying to go to 3D10. So 1S2, going through that. 
2s going through that, going through 2p, through 3s, through 3p, through 4s, and we were on 3d10. So 3d10 would land right here on zinc. Okay, so that would be zinc, and it is abbreviated zn. Okay, so let's do one of the noble gas ones. So down here, let's do xenon. Okay, so xenon 6s2, 4f14, and we, la we land on 5d6. We need to land on 5d6. Okay, so let's clear up some of this. Okay, so we need to land on 5d6. So remember, it was xenon. So we're going to start after xenon. So we go through 6s. Okay, so that was a 6s too. We're going to go through all the way through 4f because it was 4f 14. Then we have 5d6. So now at starting at 71, we're back on 5d. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So that would be osmium. Okay, so osmium and it's abbreviated OS. Okay, so again, feel free to check the key on this. Um, I didn't want to go all the way through this because it would just honestly, it would take forever. Okay, so hopefully those examples helped you for each one of those and you can rewind and go back over those. And if you have any questions, you can definitely let us know. Okay, so hopefully this helped and good luck on the review.